Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to episode number 11 of Fusion Fridays. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of all the different dimension commands in the drawing workspace. One of the main objectives in the drawing workspace is dimensioning your models. In this video, I'll walk you through all the differences in dimension commands. The first command in the dimension dropdown list is the general dimension tool. You'll see that you can also call the general dimension tool by selecting the keyboard shortcut letter D. This dimension command allows you to create dimensions simply by selecting an object, edge, point, existing dimension, or by selecting two points. The dimension tool creates a linear, aligned, angular, radius, and diameter dimensions based on the type of dimension that is most appropriate. You'll see as I hover the mouse cursor over this orthographic view, the dimension tool shows a preview based on the dimension that is most appropriate. Now the general dimension tool is one of the most frequently used commands in the drawing workspace. However, because this dimension tool works for so many dimension types, it can sometimes be hard to dimension specific areas of a model. You'll notice that the rest of the list has more specific dimension commands, ensuring that you're applying only the type of dimension you're looking for. So let's take a look at each type on the list. The first one on the list is the linear dimension tool, which allows you to measure the horizontal or vertical distance between two points. The first way to add a horizontal or vertical dimension is by selecting an edge. You'll notice as I select this edge, it adds the dimension, and I can click once again to set the dimension in place. The second way to set the dimension is to select two points. I'll click to specify the first extension line origin, and then I'll click to specify the second extension line origin. Then I'll have to move my cursor and click to specify where to place the dimension line. So to make sure you're familiar with this common terminology, this line here is the dimension line, and these other two lines that connect to the dimension line are called the extension lines. Now one thing to note here is that the dimension changes to a horizontal or vertical dimension depending on the position of your cursor and the direction of the drag. The second one on the list is the aligned dimension command, which allows you to create dimensions that are parallel to locations or objects that you specify. The linear dimension that we just looked at measures the horizontal or vertical distance between two points, whereas this aligned dimension measure can do the precise distance between two points and the points do not have to form a vertical or horizontal line. To demo this, I'll click on the upper right corner and the lower left corner. You'll see that the aligned dimension is created parallel to the two points that I selected. Additionally, if you're looking just to select an edge that isn't vertical or horizontal, you can hit the spacebar key, which will switch the align dimension command to object selection mode. I'll hit the spacebar key on my keyboard, and now you'll see that I can select this edge. The next command, the angular dimension tool, allows you to create angular dimensions to display the angle between two lines, an arc, or two points on a circle. Let's take a look at how it works. I can select two lines, or you'll see that I can select an arc, or I can select two points on a circle. All of these which generate an angular dimension that is given to us in degrees. The next command, the radius dimension, displays the radius of an arc or a circle. If you haven't noticed yet, you'll see the main benefit of using these specific dimension tools is that it only allows you to select the geometry that corresponds to that command. So for this example here, you'll see that I can select either the circles, or I can select the arcs. You'll also notice that the radius is labeled with a single extension line and an arrow which you'll have to set in place. And any radius dimensions are labeled with the letter R for radius. 
The next command is the diameter dimension tool, which is very similar to the radius command that we just looked at. Except, of course, it dimensions the diameter or the entire width of a circle or arc. Now all you have to do is select a circle or an arc, and you'll notice that just like the radius tool, it gives us a single line and an arrow that we have to set in place. You'll also notice that the diameter tool is denoted with the circle that has a line all the way through it, representing the diameter or total width. The next command is the baseline dimension command. Now this command requires a linear dimension that we'll have to use as a reference. The baseline dimension command makes it easier for us to quickly create a number of dimensions using that same origin or base point. I'll use the linear dimension at the bottom for this example. After selecting the dimension, you'll see that all I have to do to create more dimensions is select one more point. And each time I select another point, it will create another dimension, all sharing this common baseline or origin point. The chain dimension command lets you create multiple linear dimensions placed end to end in a direct line. So just like the baseline dimension command, the chain dimension command also requires a linear dimension to get started. I'll first use the keyboard shortcut letter D for dimension, and I'll create a linear dimension on the lower left corner. Then I'll activate the chain dimensions command, and I'll select the dimension that we just created. Next, all I have to do is select the points to dimension, and you'll notice that the difference between the chain dimension is that this is creating the dimension off the previous dimension and not the original origin point like the baseline dimension tool. Also, once you're done placing the dimensions, be sure to hit the enter key on your keyboard. If you hit the escape key, the dimensions won't be placed and you'll have to start over. The last command on the list is the dimension break command that is useful when dimensions cross paths with one another. Personally, I try to follow some general best practices for dimensioning, which includes avoiding crossing dimension lines at all costs. Be sure to check out the article below in the video description that covers more best practices to follow when dimensioning these 2D drawings. With that said, there occasionally may be a scenario where you do have to cross dimension lines in order to fully dimension a drawing. For this example, I'll paint up to the top where I have some dimension lines crossing paths. And I should point out that normally I would not have dimensioned the model like this, but I wanted to show you guys how to use this command and the off chance that you do need to use it. To break up the dimensions, all you have to do is select both of the dimensions. And you'll notice in the dialog box, you can either add breaks or remove breaks. I'll leave this set to add breaks and click OK. And you'll notice that now the extension lines have nice line breaks, which makes it a lot easier to understand what dimension goes with each extension line. It's also important to note that dimension breaks can also be added to other objects like balloons, bend identifiers, and leaders. Hopefully this gives you guys a better understanding of each dimensioning tool. Again, please be sure to click on that link below in the video description that includes a list of 20 general rules to follow when dimensioning CAD drawings. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.